When I started doing these weapon generator videos, I thought to myself, there is no way I am going to get past, like, a couple videos doing this. It's just not feasibly possible. Here we are on weapon generator tier list. I believe this is number six. We have a new generator today that is pretty good. Uh, it's pretty similar to um, cultured shrimps, just in the fact that it was made not in the uh, dash net generator maker thingy. This is completely by hand. I don't know what language this is made in. Probably Python if I remember correctly, but I said that about the last one and it was wrong too. Anyway, let's take a look at the generator now. This is made by a fellow on my Discord named Mousetail, who has been uh, pretty cool about giving us some updates on the uh, development of this, so I've kind of seen it in like every stage of its existence. I think the one that it's at right now is, uh, in his words, mostly finished, although I will get his confirmation. Mousetail, if you exist this comment on this video and I'll probably forget to pin it this doesn't generate things exactly like they look in team fortress 2 but like the way that it displays the stats is like pretty logical right you, you see the green is the positives and the red is the negative it's not the same like light blue medium red ish that like tf2 likes to do but it's not that difficult to see what's supposed to be happening here as you might have been able to tell by the class and slot drop down menus you can choose although this one has a bunch of like really weird ones uh, that don't really work all the time for instance if I try a pyro shield it won't go uh, but I can do a pyro no you wait I can't do a pyro secondary okay that's kind of a problem I can't do a shotgun though and it only generates shotguns, so I guess trying to generate flare guns is impossible. Like I said, this one's mostly finished, so I'll, uh, I'll give Mousetail the benefit of the doubt, because I know he's been, like, trying his hardest to get everything done, but, um, in terms of, like, how this functions, if you're not too picky on what you generate, it's pretty cool. There is an error that we'll probably come across, I mess with this a little bit, um, that if we do come across it, I'll laugh at it, I won't count it towards the tier list, and we'll move on, but, um, it is worth noting that yes, we will probably encounter some errors. There are known bugs on this one, which is like more than I can say about uh, some of the other ones that we've gone to. I do this in every tier list video, but here's the tier list. It's exactly the same as it was before. I've gone back to using the uh, the OG numbers list, so um, the only, I mean, the only reason I did that is because I already had my uh, tier list tiers like preloaded into here, but um, yep, here's what we're using. Uh, you can watch literally any other video if you want the full rundown. I won't do it every time, but it's basically a one through five rating system. All right, we'll stick with class any any. We'll just do the uh, the first 21 ish that we see. I'll try to go through these quickly so the video isn't super long. Let's go. So here's a mini gun that has plus 15% max health on wear, which ends up being I think plus 45. Uh, the here. Okay, there's another known bug that I uh, forgot to remember, I guess. Um, some of the things like health, which should technically be in flat addition values are in percentages, which means if a class ever gets like a health boost, it's going to be a percent of the health they already have, which can sometimes cause you to do a lot of math and sometimes lead to like fractions, which... I mean, obviously that's not super good. It works out here, but um, it, we'll, we'll take them as they're red. I'll, I'll, I'm not gonna modify them too much. Uh, but this gives you plus 15% max health for uh, 345 total, uh, plus 20% health from healers on wear, which is pretty good, plus 10 seconds slow time on target. Goodness gracious! And then the only penalty it has is minus 15% firing speed. I'm pretty sure for all intents and purposes, like, it does have a notable damage penalty from, like, stock minigun, but quite frankly, this is just the direct upgrade from the Natasha. It gives you 345 health, uh, it gives you, like, more health from medics, so you're just, like, able to die even less if you're being pocketed. Um, you get to, like, slow people down forever. If one of your bullets happens to, like, graze across their shoe, if it, like, snaps their shoelace in half or something like that, then... They're, they're slowed down for 10 seconds, which, I mean, if you snap their, like, shoelace in half, maybe you could just make the excuse that they're tying it. I don't know. But yeah, I'm feeling this one's really, really good. I think 10 seconds slow time plus, like, near-infinite survivability for practically no downside. I mean, it's, like, slight damage penalty. That's about it. It still does more damage than the Natasha, I'm pretty sure. This does the same amount of damage as the Tommy slot.
Kovalov. So I'll put this in blatantly overpowered. I think that again, if you had a coordinated heavy medic, this would just wreck everybody's day. There wouldn't be much that people would be able to do about it because you you go out of like headshot range. Even with a fully charged Machina, I'm pretty sure you still live on like a couple digits HP. So yeah, you're pretty much invincible with this. This is a syringe gun that gives a 25% damage boost to enemies who are on fire and a 25% damage boost to airborne enemies with the penalties being uh, minus 20% ammo reserve and minus 40% taunt speed, which I'm guessing means that it takes you like 40% longer to complete a taunt, which is like really specific like what what is this effect like maybe uber saw taunt kills amputator i just this one doesn't seem too good i mean it's like airborne enemy damage is all right but the the syringe gun's kind of hard to aim like i don't imagine that you'd be doing that much like damage boost to enemies on fire I don't know, if there's a pyro nearby, you should probably be healing the pyro versus trying to gun people down with your syringe gun. I'm just not seeing this one. I'll put this in like pretty bad. I don't think it's like terrible, but it's it's not the most fun. And I thought I was missing something. I forgot my unfun zone tier, which is basically where weapons go that like aren't technically unbalanced in the logistical sense, but if they were in the game, they would just be dumb. All right, these are fists for the heavy, which give you crit resistance on wear that's actually not too bad uh plus five seconds of speed boost on hit plus 15 percent health to nearby enemies on kills that's like effectively not quite a small health pack but it's almost uh and then the only downside which is which is a pretty big one is plus 50 percent bullet damage vulnerability on wear the thing that i was thinking would get negated is like oh if you had like crit damage resistance then you'd be able to be headshot and live but the 50% bullet damage vulnerability kind of negates that, so the only thing that I could really think this weapon would be amazing for kind of gets negated. That being said, I think if you were using this as like a purely melee-only playstyle, this would work pretty well. Um, being able to get speed boost on hit, as well as providing a bit of team support, meaning that you don't have to be, uh, or I guess you could be selfish with your buffalo stake. You don't have to worry about dropping it to people, because if you get a kill, then that restores uh, health to teammates, and uh, you're also immune to other people's random melee crits, which is kind of cool. I'll put this in balanced. I mean, it's, it's not the most exciting weapon, but I think it functions in that one regard pretty well. The, the trade-offs aren't, like, too heavy. A sticky bomb launcher for demo, which basically just gives you a flat bullet damage resistance in exchange for have projectile speed. Okay, I had this debate with somebody else in the comments of one of my older tier list videos of whether or not projectile speed would make the sticky bombs float or whether it would make them just like go half as far. And I don't think we got a satisfying answer, but I think most people were leaning toward based on how source handles physics objects, it makes them fall 50% like or I guess they don't go as far. That would kind of be a problem. But at the same time, if they were being affected by projectile speed, that literally means that the speed of the projectile traveling through the air is slower. But I don't know if that's just horizontal movement or if that means that gravity is also not affected. I think that's kind of the, uh, the thing that we didn't get to freaking, like do. So what I'm going to say, I'm going to settle this, at least for the sake of these tier lists from now on. Uh, minus projectile speed on sticky bomb launchers does make the, uh, the sticky bombs float, because I know that on the man melter, that's what I'm using as precedence, it completes the same arc as the, uh, the flare guns, it just does the arc faster. So by that logic, these would take the same arc as the sticky bombs, like the stock sticky bombs, it would just do the arc slower. By that metric, I'm thinking this would be pretty good. Uh, minus 50% projectile speed means that you can more easily hit people in the air that are close to you. Uh, it'd be more of a close range sticky spamming weapon, which I think makes sense with the bullet damage resistance because it means that you're uh, a little bit more resistant to like scouts and uh, I guess really anybody that gets up in your face with a shotgun you'd be pretty good against. So with that in mind, I'm going to go to pretty good. I think there is still some debate surrounding how you can interpret those stats, but uh, based on my not entirely arbitrary uh, interpretation of what that would be I'll say it's pretty good. An SMG, which gives you a flat 25% uh, damage resistance, or no, sorry, blast damage resistance, uh, in exchange for less max overheal. 
I mean, crap, that's pretty good. That's on wearer, too. Um, I don't really think it would change the, like, damage values that much. I still feel like if you're getting hit by two pipes in a row, you're gonna die. Same with, like, two rockets at pretty close range. Really, if you're a soldier, a demo man, and you're challenging a sniper from long range, you're probably not going to be doing a whole lot anyway, uh, because the sniper is going to obliterate you if they're halfway decent. So, you're gonna want to get close to them. I don't know if 25% blast damage is, like, that much. Uh, but at the same point, this is, like, pretty much an upgrade from stock SMG in almost every way. It's kind of rare that a sniper gets overhealed, and, uh, even if he does, it's not enough to make any, like, significant impacts. So I'll throw this in pretty good. I mean, it's just the direct SMG upgrade with damage resistances. Nothing can go wrong there. This is a level 13 revolver for the spy. I don't know why I read the level as if it's relevant, but... It's 13. That that means that it has 13 shots or something. Uh, this has 20% max ammo, which I'm guessing means reserves, and minus 15% firing speed. If you're running out of ammo as a spy, with your revolver specifically... Try getting stabs, try using your knife and or cloak watch and or literally any other tool that's not the gun. I just, this one would be kind of bad. Um, it's not like entirely a downgrade. I think 20% does give you like 32 or something. So like, okay. But at the same time, you're just sacrificing damage for basically nothing. I'm only going to put this in pretty bad because while it is basically a direct downgrade, I mean, it still would do the job. It's not enough of a direct downgrade for me to say like, yeah, this would just absolutely suck. You'd still be able to get kills with this. It's not like it would just destroy you if you tried to use it, but at the same time, it's not good. This is specifically an engineer shotgun, which gives you 20% extra health from healers, which actually does mean your dispenser heals you more, which is cool, and fire damage resistance on wear with the, uh, the penalty of less overheal and less accuracy. I think this one's pretty fair. I mean, it gives you a fair bit more survivability, especially against pyros, which I think is the main uh, thing that you'd be concerned about if you're using, like, minis or something. Really, <laughs> I actually don't know how much Engineer is going to be uh, worried about pyros, but having extra health from uh, dispensers and having fire damage resistance is nice, I guess, and the, the accuracy penalty hurts a little bit, but it's not too bad. I'll put this one in pretty good. I think it would be used about the same as the normal stock shotgun, just with a bit of extra per works. Um, I think, especially, this would be pretty good with minis, uh, because I think that's the main time that you're going to be concerned about pyro, is if you don't have the firepower to, like, instantly obliterate them before they can get into sentry range, so this, this with Gunslinger Engineer, I can imagine running pretty well. A Sticky Bomb Launcher for the demo, uh, which is 5% damage bonus, which, <laughs> okay, uh, plus 10 seconds slow time on target, plus 25% damage when at less than 50 health, which, okay, it's less than 50, not 50%. So somehow, somehow that's a flat value, but the, like, the bonuses aren't, which, okay. And then all of that's for minus 60% max ammo. And that puts Demo Man at, uh, 10-ish sticky bombs in the chamber. So, yeah, that would, that would hurt a little bit. Or not in the chamber, in, in his reserves. So he basically gets, like two and like maybe a quarter clips, which it's kind of sucks. The thing about this though is that if you're using this to sticky spam and you're like regularly getting enough kills to where it's not gonna matter if you whiff a couple stickies, um, I think this would basically be a direct upgrade from normal. You're effectively getting plus like it's not quite 30 because these multiply, but it's around plus 30% damage bonus on the sticky bomb, which is really good uh, when you're at low health. Um, I don't think that like the plus 25% damage would come into play a lot, but I think doing a little bit of extra damage and slowing down targets to make them like harder to get away would be absolutely massive for the sticky bomb launcher. I'll put this in pretty good. I think the ammo actually does hurt this potential quite a bit because you can't just mindlessly spam and it makes defending a little bit harder because you can't put down all of your sticky bombs and like um, defensive positions because then you're only left with like one full clip left, which isn't that good. Uh, but I think in, if, if you spam it, this this would be good. A demo shield, which gives you uh, bullet damage resistance on wear and it has a bonus deploy and holster speed. But like, but, but like, I mean, it's like, it's already out all the time. I'm get maybe that means for your sword, but like, I don't know. Well, I, we'll tell you what, we'll be, we'll be kind. We'll say that this is for all weapons. 
<laughs> so it just cancels out the like the longer deploy time for swords. And then the penalty is minus 50% damage against buildings, which okay. I don't, I don't even think shield bashing does any damage against buildings anyway, so that just doesn't matter. I mean, this is a shield that gives you bullet damage resistance. I guess there's something to be said about that because demo doesn't have any of those. Um, I think bullet damage resistance combined with negating the like deploy and holster speed penalty would make this a pretty decent hybrid knight shield but that's not like insanely powerful you gotta put this in actually balanced i think that could be an appropriate place for it it has a unique function that no other shield does and it's not too overbearing in the slot i think that's fine another shield which gives you plus 20 percent health from packs on wear and extra max overheal uh but then you have uh, 25% blast damage vulnerability on wearer, which kind of hurts if you are running a shield, which should give you resistances, and then minus 1% taunt speed on wearer, so just nothing for that, basically. I'm gonna be honest, I just don't think this is good. Um, the problem with this is, right, the effective health you have with your resistances active actually makes it almost equal out uh, when you pick up health packs and stuff. Because if you think about it, like, the visible health that you have as a normal demo man, assuming you're running, like, the bootlegger and stuff, is 200. And uh, picking up a health pack only gives you 40 visible health, but uh, your visible health is multiplied by your resistances to give you your effective health. But on this shield, it doesn't do that. It gives you 20% extra and, like, maybe some extra max overheal, but you have less effective health because you don't get the resistances. So it actually ends up, in most circumstances, being a direct downgrade, which just sucks. I'll put this in garbage because a shield without resistances is never worth using. It, that just is an instant, like, F tier for me. A revolver with faster reload speed and a damage boost to flaming enemies. And then it has 8 ammo drained every 5 seconds on wear, goodness gracious. So, at least it's every 5 seconds and not every second. You'd be out of ammo within about 30, which is not good. Um, I just don't think the, uh, the boost you're getting are necessarily worth the hassle of trying to like get a bunch of ammo packs so you actually have revolver ammo i'll put this in pretty bad i just don't see this really being a uh, game changer for spy i mean it's like again if you use this you would have to be so focused on getting a bunch of ammo packs to like negate the ammo drain and i just don't think it does anything useful it's basically a ranged sun on a stick with like slightly faster reload speed it's, it just kind of sucks another shield which looks kind of promising. Uh, it has damage boost when hitting enemies from behind at close range. Oh, um, plus 20% health from packs, plus 25% damage boost to airborne enemies, and minus 15% max health on wear. Okay, all this damage boosting is cool and all, but literally the splendid screen has plus 60% and you don't have to have like really stupid conditions to get it. And it has resistances in my health Thing that I said earlier still applies. So this one's also a direct downgrade. Cool. I'll only put this one in pretty bad though. I mean, it's like at least comparable to the splinted screen. Although, no, it's, it's going in garbage because you have to do so much. You basically have to go for backstabs with the shield charge, which is just like, why? <laughs> Most of the time, you're not even going to get the freaking like the damage boost and it, it sucks compared to the splinted screen so yeah that is going in garbage a fire axe for pyro which gives you 10 percent max overheal extra uh plus 25 percent damage when at less than 50 health plus 25 percent damage boost to wet enemies and minus 20 percent health from healers what is this weapon trying to be uh so it has like a crappier neon annihilator effect it does give you more max overheal but not that much um uh, it's just, this one's basically a reskin of stock, like, it's not, it's kind of a worse, um, back scratcher. The extra damage you get is, like, the same thing as the back scratcher, except it's conditional, which, I mean, I guess if you're pyro sharking at, like, 20 HP, then yes, you get plus 50% damage-ish, but... Is it really worth doing that to Pyro Shark at 20 HP when you could just use the freaking, like, 
Neon Annihilator. It's just, it, it's kind of a worse version of two different weapons that aren't amazing in their own right. That being said, the downsides don't make it so this is actually bad, so I'm just gonna put this in the unfun zone because for all intents and purposes, it's just going to be a reskin of stock for 90% of the time, which is just kind of whatever. A sniper rifle with plus 10% max overheal. Okay, I think we found the stat that this generator favors. There's one every time. This time it's 10% max overheal for some reason. Um, <laughs> wait. <laughs> Plus one ammo regenerated. <laughs> I don't know why I find that word so funny. You're freaking regenerated. It's like potatoed, like regenerated. Anyway, uh, you get one ammo regenerated every five seconds, which just. <laughs> Okay, and then the downside is deploy and holster speed penalty, which actually does suck. The only use that I can find for this is if you're on like some weird community server and you just happen to get into a spot where it's like really good that you can only achieve using like RTD effects or something, um, but you don't want to like have to leave that spot because if you do leave the spot, then you'll have to get all the way back up there. And it's just such a hassle, but you could have ammo regeneration to prevent that. That's the only situation where I could find this useful, which, I mean, as a community server connoisseur, I played on enough Neon Heights to know that, like, if you're a sniper and you get to the top band of existence, like the, the little shelf above spawns, then yeah, it's kind of a pain to get back up there. But in casual, right, this isn't gonna do anything. I'll put this in, I guess it is balanced, because ammo regeneration is a unique function for the sniper that actually does benefit him somewhat. I'm not gonna knock it before I really see, like, how good or bad it is, but I, I could imagine this being like fairly beneficial to sniper to have oh wow this is an interesting one uh this is a pistol with plus reload speed and firing speed and minus damage penalty uh, i guess plus damage penalty which is like a weird way of phrasing that um i think this ends up being just a direct upgrade from stock uh the firing speed ends up canceling the damage penalty just about and uh the reload speed just makes it so this is just a faster weapon um this is like kind of a, a it's basic, but it's a kind of neat weapon idea. I think I, uh, I kind of like this one. I'll put this in pretty good just because it's like a very slight upgrade from the pistol, but it could really go either way uh, between pretty good and balanced. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to put it in pretty good just because it is essentially a direct upgrade, but yeah, it's, it's just kind of... It's kind of there. Okay, here's the glitch that we were talking about. I'm surprised we got like 15 in before we've seen this. Occasionally, right, this can happen where it generates just literally just a weapon without any stats. I don't know why this happens. I guess because like downsides and upsides are both optional. There's a chance that um, they both don't generate. Although no, because I've never seen a weapon that doesn't have upsides or downsides. It only has one or the other, so... Yeah, I don't know, but this this is a glitch I figured would happen. We're just gonna skip these. I'm not gonna put this in the boring zone, even though I want to. Uh, we'll just, we'll give the guy the benefit of the doubt and move on. Here's a pistol that is almost identical to the revolver we got earlier, where it gives you a range sun on a stick effect with ammo drain. It does give you for the engineer, though, so I feel like it would take quite a while for your, like ammo to actually drain. The problem is, right, that the upsides are functionally useless. Again, like, airborne enemies... Okay, like, chances are, if you actually would want to use this, you'd be near a dispenser anyway. And I feel like that point, a damage boost to flaming enemies and airborne enemies, like, you're not really gonna encounter those and want to use your pistol on them. So, th this is just kind of like a negatable weapon. It's gonna go in the boring zone, or I guess the unfun zone, just because I don't think it's, like, particularly useful in any sense of the word. It's just kind of like... The stats just kind of cancel each other out and are useless. A grenade launcher for the demo, man. Ooh, this one's kind of interesting. 50% uh, of clip instantly reloads on kill, uh, which I'm guessing means, like, ammo actually does come out of your reserves and goes into the clip. Uh, and it's only, it's only two, so I guess, like, if you can consistently hit your pipes, you have infinite ammo, but that, that's... Mmm, that's still pretty much a gamble. Uh, and then 75% deploy and holster speed is absolutely brutal. Uh, for reference, I think swords are only like 50%. It's either 50 or 25. 75% uh, is like 
really slow. That, that's like taking almost three seconds to swap weapons. Now you can get around the holster speed if you rapidly switch weapons, which just means you can't use this for hybrid knight, but uh, if you're using this with like a full demo man loadout, um, you can get around the holster speed by switching to your secondary and then to your melee or vice versa because uh, then the uh, or the uh, holster speeds get overridden. The deploy speed you can't work around though and taking three years to actually get this thing out of your pocket is kind of suck, uh, to say the least. This is a very interesting one, though. Uh, I'm gonna put this in balance because if you can consistently hit your pipes, you actually never need to reload, but it does punish you for missing, and you have to stick with your grenade launcher, um, and, like, you can't really swap to other weapons without it being a bit of a hassle. That's, um, that's the only thing with this, but the concept of, like, um, the weapons reloading on kill I think is kind of cool and that's the first interesting stat that I've seen from this generator That's not been on anything else. So uh, good job for that stock revolver moving on. Okay. Here's a heavy lunch box This is something that we've not seen yet. So I'll, I'll be happy to take a look at this uh, This gives you plus five percent health regen per second on wear and uh, Extra deploy and holster speed with the penalty of max overheal Okay, here's the uh, the issue that I have with this, right? It doesn't show you what eating it does. Uh, I think that should be like, if you're implementing heavy lunchbox functionality, showing what eating a lunchbox does should be priority number one, because that's the main function of it. Um, uh, this The five health per second regen is on where you don't even have to eat the thing. For all I know, eating this does nothing. Um, I'm guessing... Like, I would guess that this restores a small amount of health, but I would want to know how much because I feel like that would affect my tiering. So tell you what, I'm going to skip this one because there's not enough information for me to put this in a tier, although I like that lunch boxes can generate if nothing else, I just wish there would be more information included with them. Stock bone saw, moving on. Stock wrench, moving on. Okay, here's something. Uh, this gives you a 25% damage resistance on wear, but it also has the Blutsugger effect where you lose 5 health per second. Yeah, that's not too good. Uh, plus 5 health drain per second. It is on the pyro. How long would that give you? That would give you about like 40-ish seconds. No, that's 200. That would give you like 32 seconds uh, of life. You wouldn't really be able to make it out of spawn. The bullet damage resistance would literally be useless because like you're losing so much health per second that any damage you would have negated with that resistance would just be drained in the amount of time that you would even be able to think about it. So I'm going to put this in garbage. The, the Blitzsauger effect should not be something in generators that can commonly generate. That's just an awful stat. It, it ruins like any weapon it generates on. Uh, this is a wrench for the engineer, which basically gives you, wow, 10 seconds of crits on kill in exchange for very slightly lower jump height while deployed. Okay, this is really, really good. Um, being able to have crits on kill basically means that if you're playing an offensive engineer, although I guess you'd still want the gunslinger and this is a wrench, um, even still, 10 seconds of crits is a lot. That allows you to basically, like, shotgun and probably a good two or three people so yeah this one's really really good and for no penalty to your buildings i think this just becomes even better i'm gonna put this in pretty good i i still think people would want to use the jag but in terms of a wrench that you're using for combat i mean this is about as good as it gets a scatter gun which gives you blast damage resistance on wear 25 percent extra damage in buildings and the con is minus 20 percent health from healers on wear this one's really good this gives you uh blast resistance on the scout, which is something he desperately wants. Um, damage versus buildings is just kind of whatever, but really, the blast damage does carry this quite a bit. Um, the downside isn't too bad either. Uh, minus health from healers. 20% uh, is a little bit. It's noticeable, but at the same time, if you're getting pocketed by a medic, I still think you're going to have enough health, like, kind of injected into you there that it's not going to really make a difference. So, yeah, I'll put this in. It's I'm going to say blatantly OP because this is just a direct upgrade from the stock scatter gun, pretty much. Um, and the stock scatter gun's already, like, the best thing in the game. It's not like there are other options that people might want to use occasionally. Really, stock is where it's at, as the kids say nowadays. Um, 
Um, so yeah, just with that in mind, just a scatter gun that gives you damage resistance on wear of all things with no real downside is pretty good. And big number 20. Okay, this one looks at least kind of interesting. Um, let's see. So this gives you plus 20% health from health packs, plus 15% max health on wear, which is... It leaves Spy at a perfectly even 143.75 health. Uh huh. Okay, that just makes me sad thinking about. Um, and then you also get 25% damage boost when hitting enemies from behind at close range. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think I don't know if this was intentionally able to be generated on the knife But that's that's kind of funny actually and you have a uh, crit damage vulnerability on wear Which is just kind of whatever. I mean if you get crit as a spy you're probably gonna die pretty quickly anyway um, Something that gives you effectively 140 max HP as well as getting extra health from health packs I think is really good that goes a long way into a uh, spy survivability And I think this would kind of rival the kunai as a less extreme but more more consistent option. Um, those are really the only stats on the weapon. Um, <laughs> the the thing that makes your backstabs do 25% more damage, like, uh, cool. I guess now instead of like killing people six times over, you kill them like 7.5 times over. <laughs> like, okay. But that and the crit damage vulnerability don't do a whole lot, so I think as far as knives go, this is probably, this this would be one of the best in the game if it was added. I don't know if blatantly OP is the right spot for this, but just so I can fit the final tier list graphic in the, uh, the screenshot here, or in the, like, final screen, I'm going to put it there so the pretty good tier doesn't extend all the way off. So, here is the final tier list. Um, these don't really matter. <laughs> Honestly, uh, the more I like do these tier lists or whatever, the more I realize that showing like this set of whatevers doesn't really mean a whole lot. Um, I think it is pretty cool though to see like how random weapon distribution tends to fall. Um, when you consider that the pretty good tier and the balanced tier are the ones that are like the highest up, I think that's kind of what you want to aim for in a generator. And we only did 21, so it's not like I have a uh, perfect sample set here, but um, this, this generator is all right. I wouldn't say it's as good as some of the other ones ones that I've seen, but from something that's being developed from the ground up, as well as, uh, let me tab back in, as well as this guy has the entire source code on GitLab, so you can actually edit things yourself if you want. I think that's pretty cool. I think this, this functions a lot better as a base more than an actual generator. I think that, uh, Realistically speaking, some of the stats on here just aren't as interesting as some of the weird ones that I've seen even from the, uh, Dashnet generators, but... Yeah, it's pretty good. I think, again, I'm a lot more lenient toward this one since it's built from the ground up and it's not just, like, editing the generator, but, um, it's pretty cool regardless. I, I, I like how this was done, even if it's not the most exciting. I think my favorite stat to come from this generator is plus 50% of clip instantly reloads on kill. That's, like, um, really the only, like, super interesting one that I've seen. The other unique one was, like, damage at less than 50 health, which I'm guessing is supposed to be 50%, but whatever. Um, I just, I just don't think that's as influential as like uh reloading your clip on kill because that, that can lead to some interesting weapon combinations i think so that's mostly it for now but before i go i do want to talk about what the future of weapon generator tier lists are going to be kind of quickly i've been doing these for quite a while uh the tier lists that i've done i think have started to kind of blend together the longer i do these i understand right that this is an infinite source of entertainment by my own standards but um i'm, I'm kind of reaching the uh, the limits of my theoretical infinity here because some of the tier lists that I've done just don't really stand out as their own video which is something that kind of bothers me personally so I'll continue to do these every time like some mind-bendingly good generator comes out I'll probably end up doing two ish videos on a uh, random generator like analysis uh, there are, I have a couple more generators that aren't amazing on their own but I think will be kind of cool just to take a look at that I want to do and then I'll probably do a big comparison video or even something silly like a uh, weapon generator tier list where I like rank all of the generators in a tier list. There, there are ways that I can take that, but that'll, that'll probably be like the final thing that I do with these, uh, at least for a good long while. So um, that's they've been fun, but I, I think that they've kind of started to hit their limit. Oh, and also for people asking, no, I will probably not finish my own generator. I only got about a quarter of the way in. There's still a lot of work that I'd want to do to get it up to the standards that I think would be uh, acceptable for where I want it. 
uh, um, cultured shrimp ended up making his generator pretty similar to what I was going to make mine, so my urge to finish mine is its own unique thing has gone way down, and most importantly, I just don't have time doing YouTube and school and stuff, so uh, mine will forever stay incomplete, maybe not forever, but for now it will. And uh, we'll just we'll take a look at the cool ones that have come in. So uh, anyway, again, this generator is made by Mouse Tail. A huge thank you for this submission. I, I like it, despite the uh, the improvements that I think that could be made as a base generator. I think it's uh, turning out pretty well. So you can check it out in the description if you want. Take a look at the rest of the Weapon Gen series, and most importantly, have a good one. Yeah.